Friday, November 20, 2009, good news from the CERN Control Center. The LFC machine is ready for restart proper. Any moment now, the operators right behind me are ready to inject beam 1 in the clockwise direction. The protons will cross sector 3-4 for the first time in 2009, since this is the sector where the damage occurred a year ago, and then circulate the beam in the whole circle. Beam 2 will follow right after. That's 30 minutes for the preparation. A bit of patience. What are the preparations that are necessary uh, to get there, to get to the go inject? Well, already we need a beam um, at the entrance to the LHC. And that beam has been there for a while now, for, for, for a in few hours. In the SPS? In, uh, uh, in accelerated in the SPS and then extracted down the two and a half kilometer beam lines. Uh, and they are actually sitting at the entrance of the LHC. They are already there, sitting already at the entrance. Ready. Okay, yeah. good. Yolga, next. We go again. And at 8.38 p.m., BIM-1 completed its first two turns all around the LHC in the clockwise direction. Yay! <laughs> this is the first time we've captured Beam 1, so in, in last year we had Beam 2 circulating but we only had a few turns of Beam 1, so this is the first. And this tells us a lot of things, it tells us that the magnetic properties of the machine are good, that the aperture is clear, uh, there's nothing sticking into the beam pipe anywhere, so it's a very, very encouraging sign and, and remarkable progress. <laughs> At this point, there was a change of plan. Beam 1 was so stable and such good quality that the decision was made to capture it, to make it stable and circulate it many times. We didn't go according to the schedule. Uh, so the schedule was that we would go for beam 1, uh, get a circulating beam, and then move on to beam 2 and do the RF capture tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. But when I saw how well the beam, beam was behaving, it was making six or seven hundred turns, between five and six hundred, seven hundred turns. And with a beam like that, you can easily measure its frequency, measure its phase, and then switch on the RF and capture it. So the, although the RF guys were not there, we called them and asked them to go to point four. They went to point four. It took them about 15 minutes to turn on the cavities. They turned on the cavities and they captured the beam the very first shot. The whole process, well, calling them, between calling them and getting captured, it must have been 25 minutes. The same thing last year, if you remember, took us almost 10 hours. Before the day was over, Beam 1 completed 10 million fantastic turns in the clockwise direction. At that point, it was dumped to try the same thing with Beam 2. Saturday morning, the fog has never left Geneva, but the night was bright. Everything went faster and better than expected, even better than the 10th of September, Lynn. Yes, I, well, I'm, I'm so happy for all the people that um, have worked so hard to bring the machine back up again. Uh, I, we are well ahead of schedule at the moment. Yes. This can change, of course, if we have a, if we have a, 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 a technical problem, but so far uh, we are going very quickly and we, are, we have to adjust our plans all the time. We try to stick to the plan we've set, but the plan is to systematically work through uh, um, the, the different phases until we can get the colliding beams. And I think the main reason for this is the quality of the, of the, the um, beam instrumentation that we have, the machine itself, and above all, the people who are operating it. If it goes faster than we think, then we will get collisions earlier than we think. Keep following us. <laughs>